Guys, I just finished reading an insane report put out by Goldman Sachs on the future of cryptocurrencies. You know, they laid out some really shocking predictions on where they think this space is headed and particularly what's going to happen to Ethereum. So I want to go over that in this video and offer some of my insights on this as a blockchain developer who works with the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis and also, you know, cryptocurrency holder myself. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step, start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So Goldman Sachs recently came out and said that Bitcoin is officially a new asset class. We've seen lots of skepticism about this from, you know, large institutions and people who are firmly cemented in traditional finance. And just as this article here lays out, it's taken time for Bitcoin to be taken more seriously as an investable asset class. But this is a huge shift in perspective, particularly for someone as influential as Goldman Sachs. So if you're brand new to crypto, you're brand new to finance at all, just a quick refresher, like who is Goldman Sachs? Well, they're a huge major investment bank in the United States based in New York City. And the bottom line is they're a major player in the traditional financial system system. And this type of public acknowledgement for cryptocurrencies being a new investable asset class is likely to have a huge impact on public opinion of blockchain technology and also cryptocurrencies themselves. So this opinion came out right as a leaked report hit the scene from Goldman Sachs that's talking about the specifics of where they think the cryptocurrency space is headed, particularly with Ethereum. And inside of it, they give a strong likelihood that Ethereum can eclipse Bitcoin, which is a prediction that we've talked about a lot in this channel, not necessarily saying it's going to happen, but taking a look at the likelihood of whether that could ever happen or not based on specific factors, which you'll see in this video. And if that does happen, it means that Ethereum will become the dominant cryptocurrency and be in the number one position above Bitcoin on websites like CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko. So here they say, you know, Ethereum is the second largest cryptocurrency and has a high chance of overtaking Bitcoin as a dominant store of value, calling it the Amazon of information. So this is something we've also talked about a lot in this channel. And if you're brand new and haven't watched those videos, I'll catch you up on that. You know, people are talking about cryptocurrency as a possible long-term store of value. You know, we're, we're, in ex we're experimenting with that hypothesis right now to see if cryptocurrencies can even become a store of value at all. And there's, you know, some camps that say, hey, Bitcoin's the best store of value because of its cap supply. Some say, no, Ether is a better store of value because the long-term issuance model for ETH actually makes it more scarce and, you know, supports network security long-term. And then on top of that, you have all this extra stuff you can do with Ether, like stake it, use it in DeFi, which you can't really natively do in the Bitcoin network. So we'll, we'll see more of that come up here in a second. But that's what they're talking about, the debate on store value, which one's better, Ether or Bitcoin. And they weigh in here and say that they see Ethereum as having a really good chance of being a better store of value than Bitcoin. And here they also say, you know, that's based on the importance of real use cases, which is exactly what we just talked about. And they can then go on to talk about the soaring popularity of so-called decentralized finance using cryptocurrency technology to recreate traditional financial instruments, such as loans and interest designed to replace the role of banks with blockchain-based protocols has helped Ethereum surge over the last year. Then they go on to talk about non-fungible tokens, NFTs, pretty much everything we've talked about on this channel. But if you're brand new, again, NFTs are non-fungible tokens where we're using them for digital collectibles a lot of times, but their use cases can be expanded way beyond that to like, you know, concert tickets, insurance contracts, and a lot more. The Ethereum ecosystem supports smart contracts, provides a way to create new applications on its platform. And they're also talking about how most decentralized finance or DeFi applications are building on top of the Ethereum network. And so are most NFTs as well. And they're purchased using Ether, the actual cryptocurrency that runs the network. And these reasons, you know, are definitely part of why I focus so much on Ethereum on this channel. It's why it's the primary technology that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. And also why it's the largest holding in my personal portfolio. And you're starting to see those types of investment thesis validated by people like Goldman Sachs. And they go on to say, unlike Bitcoin, Ethereum is not just a value token, meaning uh, it actually fuels all use cases built on top of the ETH blockchain, like DeFi, NFTs, and decentralized applications. And by contrast, B Bitcoin is simply a value token. And so as I go over this article, you know, this is really bullish in my opinion, because we're seeing things that we've been saying from this YouTube channel for a very long time echoed by people like Goldman Sachs who are saying, yes, we see the same things and we're actually publicly saying that cryptocurrency is big, it's a new investable asset class, and we see this Ethereum thing having a really strong chance at overtaking Bitcoin and actually being the front runner in this entire space. It's exactly what we've been talking about on this YouTube channel. And so if you've been watching along, 
then, you know, of course, it's not financial advice, but you've been able to essentially front run a massive opportunity, get in the game before major players do. Because when you see people like Goldman Sachs come out and say this type of stuff, it's very influential on people with lots of money. And people with lots of money can move the market a lot more than a lot of smaller individuals can. And one reason for this is just like social proof and authority. Okay, so, you know, think about, you know, what do you do? A lot of your behavior is really just based upon what other people around you do. It's not really a bad thing. It's just a mental shortcut that you use called social proof. So you have to think about every single decision and analyze it. You say, oh, what's this person doing? Well, it seems to work. I'll just do the same thing. People do that their entire lives. And as people get farther up the ranks, you know, they become wealthier. They still look around them and say, hey, what do other wealthy people do? What do people in positions of authority who have made us money, what do they do? Well, they say this crypto thing and they say this ether thing. Well, I guess I'm just going to listen to them and do that. Now, of course, people who have become really wealthy, well, many of them are going to be discerning, but they're going to look at stuff like this and say, oh, it's not just total BS. There's actual lots of use cases behind this. And there's lots of reason to actually hold the cryptocurrency in the first place because value can accrue to it. And one of the reasons I'm so really bullish on cryptocurrency for the long term, and I don't see the use cases going anywhere, I don't see the technology going anywhere, is because there's a ton of actual utility value on the Ethereum network itself, and that can translate into the price of Ether and other Ethereum-based assets going up over time. So what do I mean by that? Well, how do cryptocurrencies get their value in the first place? This is something that confuses a lot of people because it doesn't, they don't work like stocks. They don't work like, you know, real estate, other things that people normally invest in. We don't really have mature models to, you know, value these things like we do in these other markets. But, it, and fundamentally, they still work based upon supply and demand. So if you create a technology that gives uh, peop, end users benefits, right, and then that attracts users to the space, and then those users actually have to hold cryptocurrency in order to use it, then that value can, you know, accrue to the cryptocurrency itself, assuming that the cryptocurrency has sound economics and can't just be inflated away willy nilly, that there's a predictable issuance schedule for that cryptocurrency. And that as demand for the cryptocurrencies increases relative to supply, then that means the price is going to go up. And this demand increase comes from actual utility, like solid reasons why people want to use blockchain technology in the first place. And DeFi is a really good example of this. So I always talk about, you know, something in DeFi that almost every average person can understand is competitive savings and lending. Uh, really just competitive savings rate. Probably let's just start there. So it, most people have terrible interest rates in their bank account for their savings accounts, like a fraction of a percent. All right. But with DeFi, you can get savings rates that are closer to 10%, sometimes even more on stable cryptocurrencies whose price don't change. And so when you show them this benefit, that's all they really care about. They don't actually care about what's going on behind the scenes with the technology itself. As long as you say, hey, you can get a better interest rate here, then that attracts the users. And then that also drives demand for the technology can make the cryptocurrency prices go up because there's all this automation on the back end with DeFi that allows these you know, benefits to be created for the end user themselves. And because this is a supply and demand model, then the demand for this cryptocurrency is going to increase based on this utilization and that can cause the cryptocurrency prices to go up. And that's why I'm so bullish on this space long term. That's why I'm so bullish on the Ethereum ecosystem in particular because it's the clear leader in this space in terms of actual adoption. You know, we're at a, currently an all-time high for the number of active addresses on Ethereum. Sure, the gas fees are high, but it's a problem that's being actively worked on and the gas fees are actually a reflection of the demand for the network. That's the reason they're high in the first place because the gas fees are also a supply and demand model. They're high because people want to use the network for all these benefits that I talked about in this video and also, of course, this financial speculation that's going on with cryptocurrency right now. But this is definitely capture the institution of people like Goldman Sachs, who have come out and made these public statements about cryptocurrency being an investable asset class, as Ethereum being a clear leader in this space with a ton of upside potential to overflip Bitcoin. And that's the other thing about smart money, is that when they see something that appears to be undervalued relatively to something else, then they see that as a massive opportunity to jump on that. And of course, we've been saying that on this channel for you know months and months and months now. But they're the ones that are going to say, OK, that's the train I want to bet on because of the risk reward scenario. If it has a much higher upside than Bitcoin does potentially, and it's a solid bet because of everything that's happening on the platform, well, that's probably where a lot of money is going to go. So that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. If you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I should have become a blockchain master step-by-step -step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.